I don't know when the appropriate like time period to get a haircut is. Like I'm on a rotation of like every like month and a half, and I think that's too long. <laughs> that's fascinating to me. I literally <laughs> walk to my bathroom, get out my clippers, and shear my head. Really? Yeah. I, I want to shave mine off really bad, but I, I don't know. It's a big commitment that I don't know about. Oh, it's you have, you have to commit now. You have to know what your scalp actually looks like. So if you do go bald, you have an idea of what to prepare for, <laughs> and can plan accordingly. Sweet. Oh, hey, Noah, do you know what time it is? Uh, no, what time is it, Steven? It is time to talk about death and taxes. Oh! Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Let's Talk About Death and Taxes. My name is Noah Chrysler. And I'm Steven Schreiber. And on this show, we answer questions from the internet and from you all about uh, legal things. Uh, primarily about estate planning, death, and taxes. Yeah, that's whatever the internet has to offer exactly yeah. um cool we dig through avo.com which is a big uh conglomeration of questions from from confused people from the internet um and the questions are normally poorly written and and uh i don't know describe some really weird situations and it's really fun um steven is a uh probate and estate planning attorney um steven tell them about your experience oh yeah so i've been doing this for about Nine years now, but I have uh, in modern estate planning. Um, we're an estate planning law firm in Atlanta. Um, we do some probate work, but I try not to anymore. Um, but we help families, um, particularly non-traditional millennials, people who don't like regular law firms, to get their shit together and um, prepare for the inevitable. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Steven also went to Duke University, and, and he told me that he used to read the encyclopedia as a child oh, for no, fun. I did. Also, the, the world, <laughs> and bad half. I have the World Almanac every year. Um, <laughs> back before they had the internet or Wikipedia, you had to read all your information and cram it into your head. And I'm really, really good at trivia, and I'm still ready to go. I Yeah. So, so yeah, so Steven's really smart and knows a lot of things. And the goal of this show is to pull those things out of Steven's brain and then implant them into my brain. Uh, and, and it's fun because I, I don't know, I went to school and everything, but I do more marketing stuff. I, I, the idea of reading textbooks sounds like, like pulling out my fingernails. So, yeah, that's the premise of the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Sweet. Um, cool. You want to jump into the first question? Sure. All let's right. Do it. The first question comes from avo.com. Um, and I'm going to open it right here. Here we go. Open. <coughs> cool. Can I purchase a car in the name of my aunt that has dementia? I understand that a person with dementia can own a car. I have a POA. I have POA over my aunt, which is power of attorney, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. I have power of attorney over my aunt, and she needs to be put in a home but will need help from Medicare. She, is not, she cannot get that at this time because she has some money in the bank, but not much. We need to spend it down to get her help. So this person uh, wants to purchase a car um, in the name of his aunt. Uh, I'm assuming it's a guy for some reason. Um, I don't know why. Maybe I'm, I have an implicit bias. Um, and uh, Cool. And she has dementia. She has some money in a bank account, um, but she will not get government state assistance. Um, um, sorry, let me, let me oh, no. silence that. Um, she will not get assistance uh, until all of this money is spent. Can he purchase this car? Okay. I think they are – they. May have they asked a surprisingly complicated question. Okay. Okay. So it actually there's actually two layers. Um, one is the fiduciary layer, and one is the Medicaid layer. And then there's like a moral ethical layer in there as well. I feel like. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the, okay. It's kind of interwoven in both those. <laughs> okay. Right? So the first one, I'm gonna start with the easier one is the Medicaid part. So what they're in, so because of. The stupidity of American healthcare. Um, for medic to Medicaid is the only government healthcare source that pays for nursing home care or long term care. Um, so Medicare does for a brief period of time, but Medicaid is the primary source of payment. Um, Medicaid is also so Medicaid pays for nursing home care for the elderly, but. The nature of Medicare is that you have to be impoverished to be qualified for Medicaid. Oof. So, so there's an incentive to be poor. When yes, you're old. which is and thus the spend down. Gotcha. So to qualify for Medicaid in most states, you have to have 
limited assets. So it puts people in the bizarre position of having to spend all of their money um, before they can qualify for Medicaid. Gotcha. And they can always spend it on certain things. Um, wow, so, that's so messed up. Hold on a minute. So hold on. When you're old, when I when do I when do I qualify for Medicaid? What age? Medicaid is just income based. Okay. So you you can technically qualify for Medicaid at any time. Really? Um, no. The poor the, the downside of Medicaid is you have to have no money. Yeah. So one tends to not want to be on <laughs> Medicaid because it means they don't have any money. I'd rather have. Is money it, is, it, is <laughs> there like rule. so like social security that you basically just have to be just collecting social security like when you're older oh, well, that's medicare that's medicare so medicare is age-based okay um medicare you can get when you are elder so eligible for social security that's age-based that pays for the bulk of one's regular medical care so it's closer to like the medical insurance that has we know it um medicaid um, is the income-based one. It's run by the states and not the federal government. So the federal government matches and has weird formulas. Um, but Medicare is Social Security is run by the federal government. So that's the, the same, same thing. everywhere. That's the same as Social Security. That's what I'm paying into it, it's every It's part time. of Social Security, yeah. Gotcha. It's, okay. it's administered by Social Security Administration. Okay. So um, when you qualify for one, you typically qualify for both. Um, gotcha. Okay. So the – so – Told them I, I'm 36. My, so my parents, they can get Social Security, they can get Social Security, and they can also get Medicare. Um, and but because of their assets, they are not qualified for Medicaid. Okay. So if someone is in a condition where they're in a health decline and they need Medicaid for a nursing home, they need to go to a nursing home, and they can't afford to pay for the nursing home. You have to become Medicaid eligible, and that means spending all your money. Gotcha. So typically, the most compliant way to spend your money, and there's restrictions on how you can spend your money. Yeah, what are some of those restrictions? So there's like a 60-month look-back period in most states. So in the five years before you go on Medicaid, all your transactions are up for grabs. So you can't just give away all your money okay. because that's a fraudulent. That'd be, that's considered to be a fraudulent transfer. Could I buy gold and then gift the gold away? You could, you could and couldn't. You can get gold. You can okay. convert your money into gold, but you have to use your gold then to pay for your care. Oh no! Until you run out of gold. That's not going to help me. No. <laughs> okay. So, um, but there are certain exempt assets like your home and I think a car. Okay. Um. That are exempt from Medicaid. Can it be like a Bentley or does it have to be like a beater? <laughs> Typically, it's still – I don't think – I don't know if – it depends on the state. Yeah. I, I think there is asset limits. So I don't practice this area law too much. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to come like a, the loosest overview. Okay. Um, But but you have that. Um, But you have to spend it down. So you typically have to have – under ten thousand or so in cash, probably most a lot many states way less than that. I think in Georgia it's like two thousand. Wow! So you have to spend all of your money. Wow! So, which sucks. There's some there's some places to park it and to shield it. Um, but there's a general rule without talking to a bankruptcy attorney, not bankruptcy attorney, uh, estate planning attorney or elder law attorney. Um, there are some things that can be done. Um, but it's not going to be like perfect. If you start now and set up like a Medicaid trust and do certain protections 61 months out then your protect asset look backs are great but I don't it doesn't sound like this late this person can wait five years yeah. um, for nursing home care so she's gonna have to go through she's gonna put her money in certain protected places and then everything else has to be spent down okay. um, which leads to the fiduciary part so so this the question asker um, as with a power of attorney, he has what's called a fiduciary obligation to. Is it his aunt? Um, yes, um, his aunt. So a fiduciary means he has to put her interests in, in ahead of his. Okay. So her interests are the driver of the train in regards to her money, resources, and stuff like that. So he cannot do anything with her resources that enriches himself at. I'm assuming it's a him mm -hmm. um, at her expense. Yeah. So. He can theoretically buy a car if it serves For her, her gotcha. purposes. She clearly can't drive it. Yeah. So, and he, if she's going into a nursing home, it raises lots and lots of questions about what the point. What is this point of this car? Right. 
who's gonna drive this car? If he literally has this car only for the purpose of like driving her, her to her errands or something like that, mm-hmm. that's probably okay. But if he's gonna use it for any of his own personal purposes, yeah. nope, nope, nope. That's a problem. Really? If someone catches you at it and they could theoretically bring a lawsuit against you, who who would that someone be? Who knows? Yeah. Um, there's probably another. In all likelihood, it's another family member. Okay. Um. Who wants the money? Who who's concerned about either elder that he's taking advantage of her? Gotcha. Or that um, selfishly, like say if the aunt has a kid and the kid wants to inherit as much as he can. Yeah. Um, he might be like, oh no, you're not going to deplete the yeah the, her, her estate. Jeez, yeah, that's dark. Okay, sweet. That's a great reason to have a kid. Yeah. Um, but is to have someone who's invested in making sure that you don't lose all your money, so yeah. they can take it. Um, okay, but. So let me summarize because I'm dumb. But but but, oh. I, but but I but I guess the overall point is he has a he does have a fiduciary obligation because of that obligation to help her protect her assets. So yeah. he does have to. So if at all possible, and he, she has sufficient assets, she he should do Medicaid planning for her or with her, depending on her ability. And then, but he has to be careful about that car. Yeah. And he definitely has to be careful about that spend down. Mm-hmm. He needs to spend it down in a way that doesn't violate the law. So there are certain th- ways he can spend it down that's okay, like a prepaid funeral trust or a burial trust, whatever they call it in Georgia. There are certain annuities he can buy with her assets that are protected from Medicaid that draw down the assets and create income instead of an, a, eligible, an, a, an asset that counts to get for the calculation. Hmm. Um, there's other things he can do, and he needs to – if he's going to think about that, run, don't walk to a law firm and get some actual advice to your situation. Especially, I don't, I don't know what state he's in, but he needs to talk with a local lawyer wherever his aunt lives and make sure that when he does Medicaid planning for her, to not wing it. Yeah. Um, because he has, I think he, I would argue has an obligation to do it, but also has an obligation not to do it in a way that someone can accuse him of stealing from her. So, So let me... Let me ask some clarifying questions. Um, he, so he's trying to get her to qualify for Medicaid. In order to get her to qualify for Medicaid, she has to spend down her money. Um, yes. Can she Can she have a home? Can she own a home and still qualify for Medicaid? Yes. Okay. So your prim- you own one home, your you primary residence. Home. And can it be a big million-dollar mansion? She, yes. You can. Okay, cool. But it, there's going to be a lien against it. So gotcha. the state will try to collect against your house when you die. Yikes, really? So if we're a million, I mean, it still might be worth it. Yeah, um, but you can still you can keep your home and you can usually keep their your car and you can keep a little bit of cash. But if if the home is in the estate plan and that's going to go to the kids and that, and the kids want the home, is that then that doesn't work? Um, Medicaid does some harsh things to your estate. Yes. Okay. It, so it, hold on a minute. I'm an old person. I'm. It's a 85. real pitch for getting long term care insurance while you're younger. Yeah. So you don't have to go on to Medicaid. Yeah. And it's also a pitch for um, having either ample savings or some sort of insurance plan for it or die or cynically dying quickly. Um, <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's super interesting. Okay. I know oh, it's even, really bleak and it's, yeah. um, this is one of those things where you should really write your Congressman <laughs> like, it is like it, insane that we have this system. Yeah. Medicare should kind co- of busted. Medicare should cover nur- I, demand nur- Medicare should cover nursing home care. Yeah. Um, so you know, people have to go poor to, 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 yeah, to survive. get nursing home care. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's super dark. Okay, so so if you want to go into the nursing home but, and have your but something the your question asker in this case is actually I think well intended doesn't know what to do. Yeah. So um, he should get some legal advice on what to do because yeah. there's unfortunately because of the way Medicaid run every state has their own rules. So you want to talk with a local lawyer. Yeah. Um, Jeez. Get that. That's the worst. I recently learned about that where like the negative externalities of some of these like rules and, and government things are is frankly terrifying. Like I listened to a podcast. Oh, it might be an intended ne- externality. I think a lot of people want people to stay poor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I I meant more so like I I uh, I, I listened oh, to it's a, so d- well, sorry. Well, <laughs> you're yeah, fine. I listened to a podcast about tariffs and stuff and and how um like you know how how different items are taxed at different rates. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, when they are imported into the United States, and then they were talking about how because of these different tax and tariff rates, there is this entire industry of tariff lawyers that like you know charge crazy amounts like uh, to to basically get your stuff classified as a different object. 
so that you can pay a lower rate. And it makes more financial sense to pay these lawyers this money than to, you know, to get this lower tax rate than it does to just like, I don't know, make quality stuff. And and those <laughs> those costs get passed on to consumers too. Sure. Yes. There's lots of bad things like that. Um, as a lawyer, it. I know some of the best and brightest minds who are doing insane things to th get things to qualify, or also just to literally get a regulation changed. So you, which is entirely all in the executive branch. So whoever your party of choice is, if you can capture them. And honestly, the other one doesn't matter, but God is really cynical. Um, <laughs> if you can get your regulation changed by giving someone enough money, um, then you will um, be able to manipulate systems. And but, um, Yeah, that's terrifying. Fun! But there is, <laughs> there's not really a cohesive block for middle class people who need nursing home care. Yeah. yeah. It turns out, because unfortunately, most of them are terminally ill. Yeah, which is just not a constituent. You would think there would be, but there really isn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Is there a template for North Carolina will and testament? I'm trying to write a simple will. So I included this one because I I'm I, sure there is. <laughs> yeah. So 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 I wanted to talk about um you know the pros and cons of stuff like legal zoom and and that sort of thing. Um, because okay. I know you have feelings about that, I and I thought they would be interesting. So yeah, what are your thoughts on? Uh, hey, I'm trying to get a cookie cutter template. This is what I want to do. Okay, so my feelings are multi layered, and honestly. It doesn't bother me at all. I lose no sleep as a estate lawyer about LegalZoom. <laughs> um, so, le and because LegalZoom is like the newer version of like the NOLO forms or like the Willmaker software or okay. things that make me feel older thinking about the I didn't way know we about used to do things. Okay. <laughs> they, used to, they used to literally, I think they used to literally have a book that you sort of probably could get it, um, <laughs> but this company called NOLO. Um, and it had like a little book of like estate planning forms. And I guess you would either rip out the page or Xerox <laughs> it or something. And you would like fill in the blanks and then you'd sign it and hopefully witness it and knock on wood. It would be okay. Man. Because I, my, one of my very first litigation was over an insanely poorly written out will <laughs> that got, it was like an office depot form. <laughs> it was in 2014 or so, it was really bad. It was wow. really, really bad. Um, LegalZoom is a cleaner version of that. I think LegalZoom and algorithms and stuff like that are actually not a terrible, terrible They're one. fine. Yeah. Uh, like they're TurboTax. I file my taxes using TurboTax. It's fine. Yeah. It's no, I, I, just, I file my personal taxes that way. My business, I have a real human being who charges a fuck ton of money <laughs> to, to do it. So why? Why do you have that? Why do you not? Because they're your... completely different things. Okay. So my personal taxes are very easy to do. Yeah. Like a lot, some people's estates are very easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, like if everything is like, everything goes to. Jane and if Jane's dead to Sally. Right. Two witnesses, a notary. You're done. Done. Call it a day. Right. Um, you're taking a lot of leaps on it, but it's technically there and it's technically a will. Mm -hmm. um, with on the other thing with a tax end, if you actually need advice, um, TurboTax tries um, yeah. and it's fine. Um, but it's not going to be per, it's not going to be what you need to hear. It's not going to be. You're going to have to search for the information and ask yeah. the right questions. You have to really trust that algorithm, right? Um, to do what you want it to do, um, and it's not going to be there to ask questions. You guys, you could pay it more to ask questions. Um, it's like, how ambitious do you feel about certain projects? Um, like I have, a, I have a drain in my bathroom that's slow. Yeah. I thought about it. I got a YouTube video and I declogged this drain. Yeah. It took <laughs> hours of my life and I'm pretty sure I messed it up. <laughs> I might have broke some of the parts and I'm, I'm not gonna think too hard about it. And now when the professional comes back and looks at the they're drain. They're gonna judge the hell out of me. <laughs> and they're, first they're gonna judge the hell out of me and then they're gonna charge me more. Exactly. They're probably gonna charge you more because you messed it up the first time and now there's a bunch of shit that you yeah. have to now. So redo if you're like my dad and you are good at these things then great yeah. if you're not if you're me who's a lawyer who has soft hands and doesn't do stuff <laughs> like you probably don't need to be 
playing with your pipe, plumbing, right. and stuff like that. Right. I guess that's the same thing with like your will. Like if you are a person who has a good handle on it, you could probably do it okay. Mm -hmm. And if it's a small estate, it might not matter. Yeah. Um, what what is what is the number like the my estate is worth this X number? You should probably go get it. I don't like, think there's a hard number. There's no hard I number. wish there wasn't a hard number. Um, but I would definitely say as you cross into a, at least a five uh, digit number. Yeah. Let's say twenty five thousand. Okay. You're really gonna want to look at it, and then you're talking like your house, your car, your money, and and start asking some other questions like. Is this something that I guess this is a real question that I ask everyone to ask themselves and their family? Mm -hmm. Would you look at your family member, the people who are the beneficiary of your will, and tell them I did a good job? Yeah. And if you say yes and you're good and you're good with it, tip of the hat. You are never going to hire me. Yeah. So fine. So yeah. So so let's talk <laughs> but about if that. You, but if you are in doubt, if you are, if you're going to look at your kids, you're going to look at your four year old and say, I have no <laughs> idea if I did a good job. <laughs> we'll find out if I die. <laughs> no, they're, they're the person who needs to call me Yeah, uh, or call an attorney, any attorney. Like it's almost like the impl imploration to call somebody who yeah. can give you any advice um, to make sure you've done it a way that you're good with. Yeah, so I, I think that's almost like counterintuitive than what people would expect um, you to say. Um, is your is your mic okay? Is um, I think so. I have my Steve, cord. can you still hear? Oh, okay. yeah. So I have my cord. Gotcha. Right, right. Um, cool. I, I think that's almost counterintuitive than to what people might expect you to say, right? Like, hey, everybody needs a will. Everybody needs to come sure. to an estate planning attorney. Um, so, yeah. so Everyone could. Everyone could. I'd be happy if yeah. everyone came to an estate planning attorney. Not, just, not me. I'm, I would not have enough time. But, like, <laughs> I'd be happy if they did. I mean, right. But they don't. But I don't but know. but no, I think that's great. Some people I, diagnose them with a WebMD and not go to the doctor. <laughs> a lot of people do lots of things, and sometimes it works. Like I don't know, <laughs> right? But but if you're, I mean, if you like, I think I think something that you said a little while ago was like, you know, if you're you're only gonna die once, you might as well do it right, right? Sure. Like, um, and I think that that's good advice. So yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're happy, I mean, honestly, if you have twelve bucks to your name and you're, and everything's jointly is everything's jointly titled how you like it, you're fine if you're. To whoever your beneficiary is blows it at the casino. <laughs> you just don't care what happens after you die. That's fine. I am not here to make judgments or values for you. Yeah. If you really care about what happens after you die, you should probably consult with somebody. Definitely. Just at least once. Just get it once. <laughs> yeah. And if you're like, that was a waste of my money, then fine yeah but yeah cool but, but i'm the answer to your question i'm sure there's a form i'm a hundred percent sure there's a form yeah i am not sure it's the form that you need yeah and so <laughs> cool when dividing an estate must each stock be divided individually or can stocks be divided as a group i'm wondering what to inform my children um so <laughs> that is such a new that's such a narrow question who cares <laughs> i care so i think that's interesting right so let's okay, say go ahead let's Sorry. say no you're to, fine I don't mean to undermine it <laughs> i picked these questions to you, so <laughs> if someone if you're asking who cares it's normally because i care no, I, know, I, don't she, know I know that question asker cares no they probably do um <laughs> but, okay go ahead go ahead elaborate so, so let's I'm, say i'm not gonna be a dick you're fine <laughs> let's say okay. i have a robin hood account right and i'm like i have sure. a, a bunch of different stocks or maybe i have bonds and stuff and like um cool like let's say I've got I don't know like all sorts of different stuff stuff that pays dividends stuff that I have like I don't know different I, I don't yeah. know what kind of different stocks are there there's like IPOs there's like can, what about like can't you like short stocks and stuff could I like you I pass someone can. could I pass someone on like my and shorted stocks or something is that a yeah, thing so if a shorted position you could pass on but I'm not sure if you would have to have a really good transition because you want to hold that short for I guess it depends what kind of short you're holding but if we're, if we're really betting against somebody, okay. I guess you could if you're committed to the long term. Yeah, maybe it's like Tesla. If you really like, hate a company and you're really to ride this thing out to the bottom. Or maybe maybe I think Tesla's overinflated and it's going to crash, And I'm but I have a terminal you're illness. you're committed to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in the meantime, I'm willing to pay a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. So you can pass that on. So, okay, cool. That's super interesting. Now, let's say I have my Robinhood account. I want my Boeing stock to go to sure. this person. I want my other stock to go to this person. Can I do that? Okay, so this is a question. I'm going 
I'm, before I answer the question, I still want to address the premise of it. Okay. Okay. So maybe she cares too much about what happens after she dies <laughs> is the first question. <laughs> okay. I will proffer that. <laughs> that <laughs> if you're in this deep in the weeds. You're splitting hairs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But – Stepping back out to actually answer the question and yeah. not be a dick. Okay, so um, <laughs> if you talk with your brokerage company, they're really going to be the ones who just drive this. Mm -hmm. But for the mo you could, if you want that, I would explicitly state in a document um, that I want this stock to go to this person, this stock to go to that person, that stock to go to that person. You would you would probably constantly have to be updated as you yeah, change so you your buy stock. and sell stocks. Yeah. Um, but if some people, I do have clients who. Their families own the same stock for 50 years. Like they own a big chunk of, I don't know, some insurance company or some tech company that, they, that their granddad started in the garage and they may still own a share of it. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, and we're like, I want this to go that, that makes more sense as a long term plan. Right. But what happens in real life with most brokerage accounts, if it gets split two or three ways, they literally take the whole pot. Cut it up evenly. Okay. So if there's like 100 shares of one stock, everyone gets 33 and a third share of it, and they just slice it apart um, okay. in about in more or less equal shares of equal value. And the reason they do, they usually split the shares up in addition is to ensure that the shares stay equal. Hmm. So be, if you split stock A, B, and C that are equal at like 9 a.m. by 5 o'clock to be worth different values. So it's easier to split all the shares into equal chunks of shares huh. so that no one can say that they got more or less unless you tell them otherwise. Maybe that seems like the obvious and self-evident. I, I had no idea about oh, that. Oh, no. I mean, that's, that's just a typical outcome unless yeah. you tell them otherwise. Okay. Um, but huh. having said that, she's a really – I'm really curious about what her reasoning is for caring. Yeah, There's probably a good reason. There's probably a good reason I'm being difficult. <laughs> but this is around time where I ask my clients in the weeds of like, will this keep you up at night if <laughs> someone gets a different amount of the same stock? She, or, yeah, she she did not explain, but I yeah. I, I really want to ask. It I just <laughs> want to know. Um, um, can so so you can you can pass on stock in this way. Uh, are there any other like intangible assets like that that you can pass on? Gets okay. So anything that's I mean yeah, most intangible assets get split that way. So like bank accounts, if you divide it out. Um, well, granted that, that often passes through the estate or the trust in chunks. Um, brokerage accounts. Um, even real, even tangible things like real property do. Um, there are things that just can't do that or personal property. Um, like it doesn't often make sense to split personal property that way because you can't split the couch in three pieces. Right. I mean, you could, but somehow it would be worth less than all three pieces would be less than the whole. In uh, terms yeah. of in terms of like intangible assets, though, what about something like a trademark or something? Like, could I pass on a trademark That's a good to question. somebody? Okay, so it depends on how it's held. So usually, I would not recommend passing on the trademark, but I recommend forming the entity that owns a trademark and splitting the ownership of it. Okay, I guess you could split revenue from the trademark or copyright if it's producing something. Mm -hmm. Um. That's the point, though, where you're going to want to speak to an estate planner. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> if, you, if you have a trademark or a copyright that's generating income, yeah, you want to talk with an attorney. Okay. That's not something I would wing on my own. Yeah, like, that's not I, a legal Zoom form. That is not a legal <laughs> Zoom. It technically could be. It be <laughs> it's bunched into it, but it, the re outcome might not be what you like. Right. It's going to it's gonna make your estate last a very long time and be surprisingly difficult to administer. Yeah. So, like, like I could make my own bicycle, but yeah. but it probably People is like, going to suck. <laughs> like, yeah. and, and you also <laughs> should ask your estate planning attorney, if, they, if you make your homemade will, how much money will you make administering this? I will probably make – if you gave me that will with a basic will with a trademark, I will – Cynically, be like, I'll make ten times more money if you hire me to probate this shitty <laughs> will than if you have me do an estate plan for you. Yeah. And if you want to wait a few years, I will be back. I have, I'm 36. <laughs> I have time. Like, I will make the money if you want me to make it later. But I think we'd both be happier if we just did it right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um. Great. I believe this is the last avo question for this episode um also episodes are now 45 minutes instead of an hour or an hour and a half so a little bit of a change that's just a logistical um great um why would an attorney need to last f need the last four digits of my social security number to make me a will 
this person's skeptical. She's she doesn't want to be tracked by the government. I need end of life documents drawn up, and my attorney wants the last four digits of my social security, which I'm not comfortable doing. Okay, so I will profit by saying they technically don't, and I don't ask my clients for a social security number because okay. I'm freaked out that something will happen one day and someone will like yeah somehow breach our financials. break into some system somewhere. Right. Um, the reason why a lot of attorneys do want the last four is so that they can help identify accounts and information about them after they die. Gotcha. Um, but there's no inherent need for it. The will in Georgia law, at least in Georgia anyway, there's no reference to a security number. I wouldn't, even on trust or other documents, I don't recommend clients put their social security number in anything. Like, no, uh, it's okay. not a great, if the institution needs it, you can tell it to them. Okay. Um, but that's not really something I'm, I'm curious why the attorney needs. I'm not sure it was like a state specific thing or he's trying to do something specifically, but, um, or if we, or if that attorney just is used to it. Um, but for the most part to write a basic will, no, no, you don't need a social security number in Georgia anyway. Okay. Um, Let's assume for a moment that I am not very intelligent, which is a hard assumption to make. I would tell her to make <laughs> up a number too. If she was that concerned. That's, yeah. Just, just make up just a social security number. Just tell her one, two, three, four, whatever, <laughs> whatever numbers you want. That's funny. <laughs> um, what is what is the process? Let's say you do ask for it, which you don't. But let's say let's say you do, and you're going to go look up these accounts. How do you actually go about doing that? Do you submit that to some sort of like so online database? Where I wish oh. um, <laughs> that would make probate like a thousand times easier if there was an online database considering consisting of everyone's bank accounts and everyone's life insurance policies. That's not what it is. <laughs> if okay, the reason there's like a thousand reasons that database doesn't exist. Yeah. But the big reason would be is that if I'm a thief, I would just <laughs> waltz myself over into hacking into this <laughs> database. Okay. And just steal everybody's stuff. Gotcha. It would make identity theft like easy, very the easy, like gotcha. shockingly easy. Okay. Um. So the way that most people do with estate planning is that. To make it easier on your family members, you should tell them at what banks you use, what institutions you use, and then with that information, you can go and contact that information upon someone's death and bring a copy of the death certificate, and the bank will then freeze the account until you have the probate stuff done, and then transfer it. And if people have survivor be accounts with beneficiaries on it, like insurance policies, or their bank account has a payable on death provision, or like the IRA or 401k or something that has a death beneficiary, then once they get the death certificate and maybe fill up whatever paperwork the company needs, they'll just distribute the funds. But you, it, it's based on you knowing, it's based on not being a jerk to your family members and making them go on a wild goose chase um, to find it. And what I often do, what do you often find out is when someone dies, what I often will do is have their family members intercept their mail and see what comes in. Um, and then they'll crack open every envelope and hopefully they'll find a bank statement in there. Wow. This is not true for millennials and people like <laughs> under 45, do 50, 60 who do online banking. Yeah. My parents are 66 and they do on, they, their banking is still on paper. Don't go to their house. Um, and check them. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's but, like, crazy to me though. That's absolutely insane that like, that's the method that you have to use in order to that's find the someone's account. Method. That, that's crazy. There are, there are more advanced methods. I've gone bank hopping or something like that. We've like reached out some of that and, there, and depending on what it is, but if you can find their main bank account, yeah. it's the best because then you can find all the withdrawals from it and figure and piece together generally their financial history. Yeah. Wow. I and just that's you can crazy. also do something like request credit reports and do this and do that. It's a big pain. What I usually recommend for clients is to keep a you don't have to put the account numbers necessarily, but at least make sure everyone knows what where to go. What bank, yeah. What bank where your banks give are, your where social. your investment account well, not don't give me your social. Don't give me your social. They'll figure it out. Gotcha. Um Georgia Vital Records will put your will put the social security number on your death certificate. That is one of the only that's the only place your so, your social security number should be public because once you're dead, social security number closes your file up, and no one can set up credit in your name anymore. Hmm. Um, but don't put your social security number in your documents generally unless you are very confident no one's gonna look in those documents. Your identity. Yeah. And, and honestly, at this point, I mean, some people it doesn't matter, but I generally am very, very averse to social security numbers hanging out in the public. In the, but um, yeah. But yeah, but don't be a pain either to your family. At least tell them where you bank. Don't tell them, like, hey, swim my Wells Fargo. Don't just be minimally efficient. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's that's still nuts to me. Like, and you also, have to but, go but younger people, you have to make sure that they know because. 
you can literally I, I never get I don't get bank statements anymore yeah, so they're all my email or they're all on my with the login I have to log in to get them and if they don't if no one knows that then it's a huge problem yeah well that's a huge problem okay it's a huge problem for them trying to get my money yeah Honestly, uh, in, the, in the field of I'm dead and I don't care how annoying it is. <laughs> Not big of a problem for you. Because for the most part, married couples know where their money is. And if there are people you don't give a shit about, yeah. then that's your choice. But if your goal is to actually leave your estate to people, you should probably tell them where to find it. Definitely. Cool. Um, great. That brings us to a segment called Estate Plans from Fiction. Sure. Um, Steven, are you a big uh, uh, Lemony Snicket fan? No. No. Okay. Let me let me tell you. Let me tell you. Here we go. There's a book series out there called A Series of Unfortunate Events. Uh-huh. Um, with, you ever seen, like, there's, like, a Netflix show now? I, I think, think it was, like, is that Netflix Jim Carrey. Show? Wasn't yeah. there a movie? Yeah, there was a movie as well, I believe. Okay. Um, but, yeah, um, you know, Jim Carrey plays that guy, and he's, like, doing this thing. I'm no? vaguely <laughs> familiar with this, but I, <laughs> okay. I don't know what it is. I must have missed this moment of the American childhood. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Uh, okay, great. The plot of A Series of Unfortunate Events. Here we go. The series follows adventures of three siblings called the Belair, Be- 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 Baudelaire. It's been a long time since I've read this. How do you say that? Baudelaire, you think? Uh... Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> People who are fans of this <laughs> yeah. are going to be mad at me. Um, the Baudelaire orphans. Snicket explains a very um, that very po- few positive things happen to children. To the children, Violet Baudelaire is eldest. Um, she's fourteen, and she's an inventor. Klaus is the middle child, and he loves books. And uh, he's a speed reader, and he has a great memory. And then Sunny um, likes to bite stuff and cook things. Um, she's the that, that was a big drop off. In the <laughs> she's like she's like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> she's like a baby, and she, she has one big. I have too. talent. She likes to bite things. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would she's be so he's insulted if my, my parents <laughs> said that. Like, oh, this is Steven. He likes to bite things. <laughs> like, I love it. Um, cool. The children are orphaned by their parents. Um, after they are killed in a fire in the family mansion. Um, they are sent to live with a distant relative named Count Olaf after, bring, after briefly living with Mr. Poe, a banker in charge of the orphan's affairs. The siblings, um, the siblings discovered that Count Olaf intends to get his hands on the enormous Baudelaire fortune, which Violet is to inherit when she reaches 18 years of age. In the book, he attempts to marry Violet, pretending it is the storyline of his latest play, but then f- the plan falls through when Violet uses her non-dominant d- um, hand to sign the marriage document, thus causing the marriage not to be successful. That's not anything! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. You're <laughs> um, That's a very particular law. <laughs> after, after the crowd realizes, Count Olaf manages to escape with his henchmen. Um, the book series then goes on for like 11 more books. And so, <laughs> yeah, I wanted no, to. <laughs> just, just, just for the record, yeah. if you sign your marriage license with your non dominant hand, you're still probably married. <laughs> if you met all of the other statutory requirements, if you yeah. had the ceremony and the witnesses and that, signing with your wrong hand, does you're still probably need to get that a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, honestly. Okay. So yeah, so there's a couple different and, things. And, and unrelatedly, yeah. that marriage would not give him a right to her money under modern law. Really? Yeah. Okay. Marriages are still separate property. Okay. Wow. Okay, I did not know that. Um, okay, so yeah, I have a bunch of questions. Um, I answered. I answered one out of order. I no, that's like. okay. Let's. Yeah, you kind of did. Here we go. We're gonna start from the beginning. Um, number one, uh, the parents are killed at a fire in the family mansion. Um, is it reasonable that they go to this banker, Mr. Poe, after the parents die? Would that is that something that That's could happen in real life? That's confusing to me. Why? Yeah. I guess anything could happen in real life, but typically, okay. It's, so if there's a will, most parents can use a will to nominate guardians of their children. So mm-hmm. whoever would. In George, like a testamentary guardian, a will name someone. To, if I have a kid under eighteen, who should take care of them if both legal parents are dead? Um, so they would nominate someone. I guess they could have nominated a banker. I don't know why. Maybe that's, <laughs> but maybe it's like good with money. Um, so I think I think what it is is like he's like the executor of their estate, right? Or he's like the what is that person called? The end? Executor, executor. Yeah, executor. There's executor a will to an executor. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Would it, would. It, uh, or maybe I think there might have not been a will or something. Yeah, even if there wasn't a will, it'd still be like – in Georgia law, it would still – wouldn't change anything. The kids would still be entitled to the inheritance. Okay. Um, and 
they would court still have to appoint a guardian. Mm-hmm. I guess they could have appointed the banker. I don't know what the banker's relationship was to their parents. It's somewhat confusing. I think they just have so much money that like this is the guy that they like entrust to disperse their money. So like he good deal. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, but okay. But let's. But uh, theoretically, a banker could be okay. Sweet. In named this, and in charged. this situation, Sweet. both okay, parents great. are dead. There's a vacuum in Georgia. What typically happens in that situation is they look for the nearest family member. Okay, um, and if everyone declines, they go into the foster care system and stuff like this. Gotcha. But this was like a time pre foster care. So um, it's, it's, I think it's set in like the early 20th century. So yeah, probably pre foster care. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, or like well, mid. I don't know. I think it's like mid. I don't know. The Netflix adaptation I think is later too. I don't know. I'm not. I haven't read these in a long, long time. I was probably in fifth grade. Um, okay, cool. So they go to Mr. Poe, which is relatively reasonable, not totally unheard of. Going to rich people seems solid. I yeah. Guess banker has money. I they know. then they then say they looked for family relatives. They couldn't find anybody, and then they found like a distant, distant uncle named Count Olaf. How likely is that, and is that possible? That's more plausible. Okay. Um, that they look for the nearest family member to take care of them. Okay. Um. So that's plausible. Sweet, um, that's plausible. Great. He and he, um, you know, brings them under his care. Does he? Is he entitled to a portion of this estate? No. Okay. okay. So uh, I'm going to bring this back to George, like all I know. So if he's managing their money, he would be a conservator, and he's entitled to compensation for it. So we have the compensation for management of it, but he's not, in, which is usually a percentage or actual fees. Um, but it would be court supervised, and you would have to submit annual returns and accountings and inventories to the court and have a surety bond or insurance over it. So, but on the assumption that he wouldn't steal it, mm-hmm. um, to, is a, the insurance the surety bond would be an insurance protection in case he did something bad, like misappropriated funds, and then a surety bond company would go after him if he did. So, so he doesn't get any of the estate though, unless he's managing the money for them. Yeah, like well, exactly. Service. Unless he's doing money, like managing it for and them. And so, did, is that something that he can elect to do? Like, hey, I'm. Don't worry, I'll, I'll manage the money. He can or do it. Yeah, but he has to post a bond. And he has to meet all the requirements. Okay. That are of good. If so, it's in Georgia. So what would he? You had, you had to. You had, it would be supervised by the probate court. Gotcha. Okay. And so basically, he would just have to spend that money in the best interest of the children, according to a budget. Gotcha. That was approved by the judge. Okay. So gotcha. you, you'd have so to, you'd have to you'd write have, up a budget. You'd have to list all the kids' expenses gotcha. and submit a budget, and the judge would have to approve it. Weird. Okay. Cool. Interesting. Did not know that. Um, so, and then, yeah, and then he'd be eligible for a little compensation based on his effort. On his work that he put in there. Yeah. Ten bucks an hour to oh, make oh, this. I think it's actually oh. a percentage. I think it's oh, like okay. a little under one. It's like maybe about one percent or so. I mean, if it's a big fortune, it's a lot of money, but yeah. it's not. Yeah. It's often not worth it. Um, yeah. Okay. And, Unless and, you want, and honestly, a lot, a lot of times uh, in situations like that, if it's too big, if it's a, a lot of times they'll appoint uh, in Georgia they'll appoint a county administrator over it, mm-hmm. um, which is literally what it sounds like. The court has uh, attorneys they work with who have a giant insurance policy and, and do that for the whole county. Sweet. Right. Anywhere unrepresented estates and stuff like that. Um. Okay, so so he he ended up he ends up obviously not doing this, and instead his plan is to get this inheritance in another way, right? So he's going to then trick the eldest daughter into marrying him. That's the part that's confusing me, isn't yeah. he? He's our distant uncle, exactly. And he's trying to marry her. So is that not is that's my next question? Is that not cool? You can't so, marry your family members. I don't. I, which is I mean, not that I would point. ever okay. want to. I, 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 I was just looking this up for a client because we had a really? marriage that might have been voidable. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, um, so, uncles and nieces cannot get married. Okay. What about second uncle? It's like, hard. It's unclear. It okay. gets when it gets further out. It's probably legal. Okay. Um, incidentally, Ugh. cousins can get married. But really? Yeah. George is really weird. Yeehaw. There was like in, law, in the bar exam, we had like a whole. There was like um. They allowed for ki- the ki- they call it kissing cousins, Ugh. and then oh, there was like the, it was like kissing kissing cousins get married, but not um, same sex couples. And they're like, "Fuck you all." What are you serious? This was prior to 2015. It was like very. I can't marry my <laughs> male cousin, but I can marry my that's female true, that's cousin. True, you here? couldn't marry your male cousin prior to 2015. Oh my god! I didn't even god. think about that. That's really jarring. Oh wait, you could marry your male cousin. You could not. You could not. Oh yeah, okay. the male part would disqualify. You could marry your female cousin today. Can I marry my male cousin or not? Now you can marry your male cousin. Oh okay, I can. 
for whatever reason. If, I don't if, want to. Whatever. Colin, Rachel, Donald, Brandon, I don't want to marry whatever you. Whatever <laughs> works for people, I guess. But cousins and cousins, I mean, cousins, fine, but uncles, no. Okay. Uncles, nieces, and uncles, aunts cannot marry nieces and nephews. Um, and then it starts getting weird. It starts after that. There's actually not that much. Yeah. So after you get like outside your your direct up and down line, like yeah. not no parent, grandparent type yeah. thing. Yeah. Yikes. And no aunt, uncle. Okay. Then you're. What about like great aunt? I'm sorry, Aunt Janine. I love you. No. Uh, <laughs> probably not. But okay. I have to look back at it. But once you get more remote out, then yeah. it gets like. Yeah. Anything's up for grabs. Jesus. So under Georgia law, you probably could marry it. I'll have to double check, but I think you can. If I'm wrong, someone needs someone should correct me. Okay. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can. Like a distant uncle is probably someone you could marry if it's like two, three, four j- things away. Yeah. It's two, three, four removed or whatever they call it. It's that's crazy. It's not great. Yeah. But, um, and it's. He must be significantly older than her. Oh, he definitely is. Yeah, no, he's like old and like looks like this, and they're like, yeah, he's got like crazy he hair. Wants to... <laughs> it's great. What's the strategy? I think she's gonna outlive him. What's yeah. the game plan? Well, he's then. I think. I think the plan is to like then murder the kids like after that. <laughs> so he's gonna marry. The he's gonna marry the old. oldest one. Yeah, she's and like. Six, I think she's like sixteen or seventeen in the book. He's gonna wait till she turns. Which, so, so that's my other question is, um, she's, she's technically like a minor or whatever. Can you, can you marry someone before the age of 18? I don't remember. I think you can marry someone. It's, you're, you're pretty close. So I think around 16, 17 in Georgia, you can get married without really? parental consent. Wow. But okay. I, I could certainly say 18. Yes. But I want to say it's maybe it's a little younger. Okay. These so are, that's plausible too. Huh. If your lawyer really knows off the top of their head, that's you weird. Wonder yeah. Why? <laughs> like you probably had a case just about this. And if not, why? Yeah. Um, that's but, funny. Um, but yeah, I, it's. Oh God. Um, so, but if she did get married, in, under Georgia law, she could. Pr- it's probably avoidable marriage. Yeah. So it's not might not be void on its face, but she could probably automatically get it voided if she asked the court to so she probably couldn't get rid of it by signing with her other hand, dominant <laughs> hand but she could probably go to the court and be like no he's my fiduciary and also i'm 16 or 17 and that's a weird marriage yeah and a judge is probably going to be like no that's weird so 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 at the end of the day if this like an injustice like this were to happen in the real world, like there is ultimately a judge who's a person, Probably. and if you plead your case, but if you honestly, plead your case to the judge, though, even they if could. she married him, even if yeah. they rule it's a good marriage, which they, I guess they could. Yeah, the inheritance is still separate property. Okay, so, so what do you mean by sh- that? I don't so really understand that. In marriage, so two people come to a marriage and they both have their own property. Yeah, at least, at least nowadays they do anyway. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, once you get married, then you have joint property, yeah. and you have from to when you get divorced, you get married. You yeah. split it so, in half. Yeah, exactly. So I have person A brings their bucket of stuff in, and person B has their bucket of stuff. Yep. Those are separate property. Okay. But then the second they get married, the clock starts running on joint property, on marital property. Okay. So everything of the marriage gets split 50-50 if they get divorced, but they still keep their bucket of separate property. Okay. So that's preceding the marriage. Yeah. Anything preceding the marriage. Gotcha. Inheritances, regardless of whether you inherit before the marriage or during the marriage, it's still considered to be separate. Gotcha. So long as you don't commingle it. Yeah. So don't put it in a joint bank account. Yeah. With your husband or wife or whatever. Right. As long as you keep it separate, it's gonna be it's yours. yours. Cool. You, the Let's divorce say... court will give it. Oh, for superior court. They'll give it to you in your divorce because it's your property. Let's say he his then his plan is then to secretly murder her through dastardly things, make it look like an accident. Uh, th- at that point, does he, he would, get? He would be, if he was her act. Okay, so if he was her actual spouse and he didn't murder her, <laughs> he would inherit it. He'd be her sole heir unless they had a kid, which yeah. would even be more <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> no, but, it's a disturbing book. Yeah, I um, know. I, <laughs> but if she mur- if he murdered her and there was a preponderance of the evidence that he did, this yeah. is less than a criminal. They okay. Th- if they can't convict him of murder yeah. or don't even try, he could yeah. still be disinherited under the slayer statute okay. which means if you if the court thinks you killed them this happens in the probate court not mm-hmm. in the actual criminal court 
if the probate court judge thinks it's likelier than not you killed the person, you won't inherit from them. Gotcha. So, um, so you'd have to really try to make it look like an accident. Like, yeah, oh, back then it was probably pretty easy. Like, <laughs> people best guess. Like, if you're in the, a minimally into true crime, like it was <laughs> really easy to commit murder up until like 1990, maybe. Like, it was no very DNA. easy to get away with murder. Yeah. People are like killing their spouses and being like, she's a black, like her husband keeps seeming to die. And it's like <laughs> husband four or five before they realize we have a trend here. It's like, it, anyway, it's a pattern. that's it's funny. Like, all of them seem to get sick the same way and die the same time. So damn. Yeah. So hold on a minute. What I'm hearing is that th this book is totally legit. Other than the left hand, be. Like, other than the modern law, I mean, modern law might not have changed that much. Yeah. Depressingly. Yeah. But the, the, the court, there'll be a lot more protections for the kids money. Gotcha. Okay. And honestly, shame on the parents for not estate planning better. Yeah. There's like about 50 problems with their estate plan that I would just rattle off. <laughs> Starting with the fact that they're going to leave a big fortune to an 18-year-old. That's their game plan. <laughs> and also, why is it always seem to go to their oldest daughter? What are the other two? Yeah. Now, under Georgia law, typically there's no will it be split into three equal shares where each one gets their third when they turn 18. But like... Shame on them for not <laughs> planning well. It is a problem. Fantastic. And yeah. Cool. Okay, great. Um, I believe that is everything we've had planned for this episode of Let's Talk About Death and Taxes. Sure. Um, is there anything you want to amend to the end here, Steve? Uh, no, no. Okay, great. Then let's close don't it out. Don't marry your family members. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's Even try to keep that at a distance. Even clueless is weird. Don't marry <laughs> your family members. That's, that's my only thing I implore people to do. Even if it's legal, you probably still should marry your I, uncle. Please don't. <laughs> it's there's, it's kind of gross. There's, there's billions of people. <laughs> Why pick that? That's funny. Widen your scope. Go to a new town. Do something. <laughs> Go to a, a speed date anything. Yeah. Um, cool. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you interact with it in some way. If you're watching on Facebook or uh, social media, uh, like it, respond, give it, post a comment. Um, if you have questions about your own personal estate plan or just an interesting estate planning question that you have, post it in the comments down below. We will answer it on the next episode of this show. Also, if you want to submit pre-recorded voice memo things, we'd love to play them on the show yes um submit them to our email what is the email for that it is uh so you can submit it to um info at let's talk about death and taxes.com awesome or you can also email it to my regular firm page at info at chicagolaw.com sweet if you guys would like help creating an estate plan um we can help you do that um if you go to our website modernestateplanning.com uh that's all the information there um to reach out to us um and also you can contact us can i just give the main firm phone yeah, number? yeah our main number sweet yeah. um main number is 404-939-7562 um, that's 404-939-7562. Um, again, we make all sorts of estate plans and I don't know, Steven's really, really smart and he will help you plan your estate and do it right instead of the Lemony Snicket character. They're so rich. <laughs> oh my God. I'll, I'll, I'll have to think about that more. It's an, I'm not going to let that go. <laughs> Fantastic. Is there anything I forgot? Oh no. Good. We're good. Sounds great. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you could share this, we'd love you forever. I'd love you specifically. So <laughs> yeah, I can't make any commitments <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sounds great guys thanks so All much right. for watching have a good one bye-bye right.